What is up everybody, Doomwake here, welcome to another edition of the Modern Meta Game, which we're going to be doing here every Monday. As always, before we continue, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, please be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below, let me know what you thought of the video, and if you enjoy the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button, we greatly appreciate it, and without further ado, let's get into some metagame talks out, shall we? So, we had a few events over the weekend. Uh, unfortunately, as of the time of recording, we don't actually have the full metagame data for the Star City Games Invitational. Uh, if you watched the video that I did on Friday, I had like a metagame prediction where I went over what I thought people were going to play based on a number of different factors. Unfortunately, we don't have that metagame data, so we are sort of limited as to what we can talk about. But even without that, there were still a bunch of events that took place this past weekend. So the events that we're going to be going over today are the Star City Games Invitational, which took place in Roanoke, Virginia, the Magic Online Championship Series, which took place from the comfort of everybody's own home, and the Saturday and Sunday Challenges, which took place online as well. So there are four pretty big events. Now just kind of brief aside on the events in particular, the Star City Games Invitational was split format, standard and modern. Invite only event, you had to qualify either via arena qualifiers or if you were already qualified for a previous invitational, that invite carried over. Due to the pandemic, there was a lot of, you know, there, there wasn't really any Star City Games tournaments. So because of the pandemic, they uh, allowed all the invitations to carry over, which is nice. I, you know, I appreciate that. The Magic Online Championships, which was a tournament that is incredibly difficult to qualify for. It is eight of the best players on the Magic Online platform, and they are also playing split format. It was Modern and Vintage Cube, and the Modern decklist had to be submitted. I want to say they had to submit their decklist by Monday, and then the decklist became a, became public on Saturday. So that was that event as well. And again, it's just eight of the eight of the best minds or you know best players of all of magic online so definitely a uh, a good snapshot to see what the best players in the world are bringing to such a high stakes tournament first place was twenty thousand dollars and then we have the usual saturday and sunday modern challenge top eights so without further ado let's show you some deck lists all right, here's some results. Now, first and foremost, we're going to talk about in the top left-hand corner, we have the Magic Online Championship deck list. These are the deck lists that the eight players in the event submitted. Again, this was a very high-profile event, a lot of stakes in the line. So these are what people thought was would give them the absolute best possible chance to win. So we have Marcella, who submitted Footfalls, Teamer Variety. Nico submitted Hammer. Derek Davis with five-color Elementals. Alex with four-color Living End. Logan Nettles with four-color Omnath. Jack Potter, House of Mana on Twitter. Nobody is surprised to see him play Amulet if you follow his Twitter. And Sam and Nathan both submitted Jund, Saga. I believe they work together. So... <clears throat> couple there there's two interesting things here two standouts one five color elementals now for the most part i had thought that the elementals deck had been su uh, surpassed by the four color canister deck it just seemed to me that the canister deck had a lot more staying power a lot of raw more raw power level in its actual just you know card quality and you don't have to draw cards like flamekin harbinger and stuff like that um but I think that there's maybe two things that drive the choice to play Elementals. First and foremost is if you expect a lot of Cascade, like Teamer Footfalls and Living End. Those decks have four Force of Negations, and the Elementals deck has a lot less targets for Force of Negation than the Four Color Canister deck, so I could see that being a thing. And then if you wanted a little more flexibility in terms of your deck building spots, you do have Flamekin Harbinger, so you can play some more tutorable one ofs I believe, let me just actually pull up the deck list. I'm going to, don't 100% quote me on this, but I'm 99% sure that the Elementals deck list actually had a Flamekin Harbinger. I'll post a link to all the deck list in the description below. So you can kind of go ahead and check that out yourself. But yeah, this is, so this version has four Ephemerates and 32 creatures, and that's it. No, no, no uh, Teferis or anything like that. And they do have the four Thunderkin Awakener. A Skelemental and two Vesper Larks as well. Again, I'll, I'll post the deck list below so you can go ahead and check it out. But yeah, that's I thought that was pretty interesting. 
um, that that person submitted that that deck list. But again, if you want to dodge force and you want a little bit more, more flexibility, I think I can see it. And then Amulet Titan just wanted to shout out House of Mana on Twitter. I know that, um, again, for those of you who follow House of Mana's content, you're not surprised to see him play Amulet. I know he was kind of... Um, uh, kind of undecided on what to play for a little bit. I don't know if maybe that was just him uh, Hollywooding and he was just going to play Amulet the whole time. But yeah, uh, absolute master of his craft. So not ton, uh, not super surprised to see him play that. And just worth noting, the person who went 3-0 in the modern portion, because they split it up into two pods. They had a cube pod and a, and a modern pod. Nico went 3-0 in the modern portion and then ultimately won the entire thing. So he went 4-0 in modern with the hammer deck. Uh, very very skilled pilot, and uh, not surprised to see him take it down. Now, in the bottom left, we have the results from the Star City Games Invitational. Now, these aren't necessarily the eight decks that did the best in the Invitational, because, again, it was split format. They had Standard and Modern. These are just the deck list that the top eight players, when, you know, the, the top eight combined Swiss, Modern, and Standard, these are what those top eight players played in Modern. So... And again, we have limited data. There's, I, as far as I just checked, there wasn't any uh, metagame, like full metagame breakdowns or anything like that. So the, this is what we got. Now, first and foremost, Corey Bowmeister did win the entire tournament playing, you know, he played Grixis Death Shadow on Modern. I will say he did go 8 0 in Modern. So that is definitely something to, uh, to discuss here. Then we have Dominic, who submitted uh, Orsoff Hammer. Shaheen and Pete both submitted uh, Blue White Control with Kahira. Brad Nelson played Jun Midrange with uh, Luris. That's Jun Saga, excuse me. Kellen played Four Color Yorion. Cameron Sullivan played Jeskai. It says Jeskai Midrange, but it's it's Jeskai Murktide. And then eighth was Logan Underwood, who submitted Grixis Midrange with Luris couple interesting things here. Now, I am a little bit surprised to see Grixis Death Shadow go 8-0. I know Corey is a fantastic Magic player, and that is definitely something, uh, you know, part of, pro almost assuredly part of the reason why he went 8-0. But in terms of the positioning for Grixis Death Shadow in the metagame, I mean, there's still a ton of Solitudes around. I, I would be pretty scared to, to register a Death Shadow deck when there's a lot of Solitudes. Now, I know he had, he, he was the dress down version, so... Dress Down is a card that is good against Solitude. It just kind of makes you play in these weird patterns. Like, it, it just... It, 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 I don't know. It's You know what I mean? So I would just be cautious of that. And then the other two things I will note is there's two copies of Azorius Control. These are probably two of the best control mages in the entire room in Shaheen and Pete Ingram. So not terribly surprised to see those particular players submit control. Um, I don't exactly... Again, I really wish we had some metagame data because I wanted to see what percentage of the room played control relative to these two people doing well with it. Uh, wish we had some metagame data on that, but because, again, I really didn't even think people were going to play Azorius Control in the SCG, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not surprised to see these two people playing it, but, you know, I just really would like to see what the percentage was of the field that was playing the Azorius Control deck. Uh, Brad with Jun Midrange, I know he was talking a little bit about that on Twitter prior to the event. I skipped over Dominic playing Hammer, Great player, just, you know, played played one of the best decks, unsurprising there. Uh, Kellen submitted the Four Color Yorion deck. And the last deck I want to talk about here is the Grixis Midrange deck. Uh, this is the, I think, I want to say Yamakiller was playing it a bunch in prelims and leagues and stuff like that. Uh, it's basically just Grixis with, uh, I believe this is the Snapcaster Mage version, let me double check. But yeah, I want to say that... Give me a second here. So this Grixis deck is just Channeler, Snapcaster, Ragavan, and a bunch of spells. No shadows, none of that stuff. Three Coligans command. Uh, so just a, a, a ton of removal, a ton of that kind of stuff. So I think if I were to play a Grixis deck, this is probably where I would want to be. Just because you don't have to play the shadows that really kind of get blown out by Solitude. That can get blown out by Solitude. Uh, but just something worth noting here. And that's not that's not the first time we're going to see this Grixis midrange deck. So that's kind of going over the SCG again. I wish we had a little bit of the like actual metagame data, but this is what we have. So this is where we're at. And just kind of scanning over the challenges pretty briefly here. Uh, two, the two challenges here, top eight. Uh, first, the Saturday one was won by Blue Red Murktide. We have Amulet, Murktide, Mill, Murktide. There's the Grixis deck again that we just talked about. Four Color Yorion and Yogmoth. Bunch of bunch of really good players in the top eight. So. Uh, Demonic Tutors plays a ton of Yogmoth. JC plays a ton of Amulet. Doom Switch plays a ton of Blue Red Murktide. Um, but yeah, we see three copies of Murktide in the top eight here, which I thought was 
fairly surprising. Um, maybe it's time for it to make a comeback. I, I'd have to play a bit more of the Murktide versus Four Color Yorion matchup to see exactly how that goes. I can't imagine it's good for the Murktide deck, but you know maybe there's some some Torpor Orbs and some other stuff that you can play to uh, to maybe make that matchup a little bit more palatable. Um, and then there's a copy of Mill here. Again, Mill's kind of one of those decks that just <laughs> randomly shows up from time to time. Um, I would be a little bit weary of playing it in a format where there's a decent number of Yorion decks, and most of those Yorion decks also have Endurance. So up 20 cards with Endurance is kind of a tough sell to play a Mill deck right now. But, you know, I guess if you play against a bunch of Luris decks, then you're then maybe you're going to have a good tournament. And I think that's what Juju Bean said on Twitter, that they played up a whole bunch of Luris decks in the event. So, um, But yeah, again, there's another copy of Amulet here with, uh, you know, it, it was an absolute, you know, again, master of their craft that's playing Amulet. Usually when you see Amulet in top 8, it's from somebody who plays a ton of Amulet. And then the only other thing that I wanted to note here is another copy of the Grixis Darcy deck. That deck seems to be picking up in popularity. I would have to imagine it's somewhat decent against the Four Color Yorion deck. Because you have a lot of ways to keep up with them later in the game, like Coligan's Command and Snapcaster Mage. But you also have one drops to kind of get the ball rolling. So you can kind of put the onus on them to make them act. And you still have four expressive iterations to go deep into the game. So, I don't know. It's an interesting interesting thing and something that we might have to uh, to explore here. And then going over Sunday's top eight, Hammer in the hands of Stefan, who is CrusherBot BG on Magic Online, 10 and 0 in the tournament. They play a ton of Hammer. Very good, very skilled pilot with the deck. Copy of Belcher. And then we have the four color Yorion deck, another Hammer, uh, Burn in the hands of Fracom, who plays a ton of Burn. Not surprised to see that. Another copy of Murktide, Teamer Footfalls, and last but not least, another copy of Amulet Titan. So if we talk about companions, we have five for eight in the mocks, seven for eight in the SCG, uh, three for eight on Saturday, and then one, two, three for eight on Sunday. So um, still overall, what's that? Seven, 12, 15, 18 out of, is that 18 out of 36? Is that exactly 50%? Sounds like it to me. Um, let me check my math here for a second, but anyways, yeah, um, the companions obviously still, still running rampant and <clears throat> for the most part, all these decks are what you've seen before. I think the, the one things that I will note, the Grixis deck, I am a, I'm a pretty big fan of, I think that deck is, is pretty good and has some good, good, you know, good places in the metagame moving forward. Um, I just want to see if there's not, that's pretty much it. So yeah, uh, that covers the top eights. Now let's see if we can find a little bit of spice in the top 32s. All right, so just two more deck lists that I want to highlight here. On the left-hand side of your screen, the, for no, we're noting these are both from the Saturday challenge. These are the spice, the spicers that I found. So uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, 19th place, you see Soggy Cheerios who played Emrakul through the breach. Now there's not a ton of like interesting and fancy stuff going on here it's more so i just wanted to highlight that this deck had a somewhat decent placing within the you know in the in the challenge itself um this deck might be on the rise again i'm not gonna lie the amount of force of negations are going down a little bit and even against force of negation you can fight with through the breach on their end step and there's just not a lot of people who are prepared to beat an emerald hit you know especially when you're like interacting with them up the curve you have lightning bolt you have fire ice you have counter spell prismaric command so you have a lot of good interaction you have a lot of good counter magic and you're a blood moon deck so there's a lot of four color or five color you know greedy piles going on with the canister decks and, and all that kind of stuff so just something to highlight here i think this deck could be uh, somewhat decent moving forward maybe maybe we'll have to give it a shot this week and then on the right-hand side of your screen, you see uh, First Turn Negator in 23rd place, who played a bit of a, a spicy number here. We have an Underworld Breach deck. This is something that I've seen been popping up. I want to say the username was Jiggy Wiggy or something like that. They've been playing a little bit of Breach. And it's kind of it's kind of like a almost like a combo aggro deck, right? You have Ragavan DRC, and then you're backing that up with the Underworld Breach Grinding Station, uh, that kind of stuff. So I could definitely see, you know, 
spots where this deck is really good. My one concern is it's a little bit weak to Graveyard Heat because your your combo plan involves Underworld Breach and your beatdown plan involves Dragon's Rage Channeler. So I'd be a little bit weary to submit this if you're worried about Graveyard Hate. But there's a lot of stuff to like. You know, it has a, a, a fairly fast kill, uh, has really good interaction. Like, you you just get to be an Unholy Heat Lightning Bolt deck, which is pretty sick too. And you have a pretty fast kill. You have good, um, you know, good amount of card advantage. Two iterations kind of weird. I feel like I'd want to play more copies of those. Uh, but yeah, these are just the two decks that I wanted to highlight in terms of what I thought was interesting and kind of some, some cool stuff that happened over the weekend. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Modern Mena Game. As always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video, and please consider subscribing. Uh, we're going to do it all again next week. Hopefully we'll have some uh, more interesting events to cover outside of just the challenges. Um, and that was a lot of fun. So again, please let me know. Uh, did you guys like the format of the, of the video? Uh, anything that we can maybe improve on? And I will see you guys next week.